My name is Mark Barmettler. I'm the Vice President of Engineering at Tempo Communications. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the new TV220E, which replaces the current TV220. So first thing you'll notice is the size and shape of the TV220E. Uh, TV220E is more compact and designed for handheld control. The second thing you'll notice is it has a high resolution color gesture-based or capacitive touch LCD. It also has fast charging lithium ion batteries that will last more than a full day of continuous operation. The TV220E can be controlled through the LCD interface or it can be completely controlled through the set of buttons. So we designed it that way so that if you're wearing gloves or in your dirty environment, you can use the buttons to control the instrument and not have to touch the display. The TV220E is pre-configured with USB, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet. Right now, we transfer results using the uh, USB thumb drive to our TRWE application. In the near future, we'll be releasing an update for a wireless transfer of results through Wi-Fi. It is pre-configured with Ethernet and Bluetooth. We just haven't enabled those features yet. The TV220E also has a very intuitive menu-driven user interface. We've broken up the machine into four different parts. We've got the TDR interface. This is where you'd be making measurements on your cable plant. I'll just go home. The results menu. This is internal results and stored USB results. And I'll go through that in a minute. The cable library. This is where you can create cables, you can delete cables, you can change cables and you can, uh, informing the TV220E, the cable name, the loss value, and the VP. And finally, we have the settings menu. This is where you can set up your device settings, you can set up your measurement settings, set time and date, and gather information about the instrument. So I'm gonna to navigate to the TDR menu. This is where the most important functions are. We've placed the TDR settings and TDR control at the fingertips of the user. We've placed the gain, the uh, pulse width, smoothing, and VP are all on the front panel. Being able to switch between manual and auto mode, getting to the cable library, controlling the event mode and the user distance, setting markers, deleting markers, and saving and loading traces are all available from the front panel or on the buttons. In addition, you'll see that the TV220E is broken up into two trace screens. We have the overview screen and the detail screen. I'll go into much more detail in later videos on all of this. In the overview window, I can use my fingers to pinch in and I can zoom the detail window in on different portions of the trace. This allows me to zoom in and zoom out and then move my detail window here along the cable looking for faults or events. In addition, we've added contextual help to the TV220E so I can press the hamburger key and I can get to things, uh, controls that I might want to get to quickly. I can control the backlight, I can control the TDR mode, I can control the units, nanoseconds, feet, and meters. I can also control the velocity propagation display. So those are all available to you. And we've added in-app in help. I can press the help button and I can get help uh, that is contextual to the menu we're on. So right here, I'm on the, the TDR trace menus and it's showing me information about that. If I change and I'm on a different menu, help will show me, again, information about the screen I'm on. Temple Communications is confident that the TV220 can diagnose the health of your coaxial cable plant and issues faster than any other TDR in its class. The TV220E's superior performance, features, and ease of use will save you time and money. In this video, we're going to explore the TV220E result page. So I can navigate to the result page using my arrow keys and pressing enter, or I can just tap on the results. In this menu, you're displayed a list of results that are either stored internally or on the USB drive. 
The results are organized by time and date, and I can select a different result, either using my finger or by tapping, or I can use the arrow keys. Once I've highlighted a result, I can do a number of things. I can load the result. Loading a result, as designated by this icon, means that that result's information, the, the result name, and the data have been loaded into memory. And I can use that later on in the TDR menu to either display a save result or compare a save result to a live trace. I can then also, selecting a different uh, result, I can delete a result. I can transfer that result to USB or I can exit. So let me try deleting a result. So I can press the delete button. TV220E is asking me, do I want to delete it? If I want to delete it, I press the delete and that result has been deleted from memory. The TV220E will not delete results that are stored on USB. We only manipulate results that are on the machine itself. I can then pick a result that is on my local drive and I can move that result to USB. TV220E is again asking me, do I want to move it to USB? Yes, I do. And then that result has been copied up to the USB drive. I can also, for uh, moving multiple results, I can press the select button and the, and the machine has selected all of the results that are in internal memory. I can choose to delete them or I could choose to move them to USB. I'm not gonna do either at this point in time. So I can press that again and unselect those. I can then exit the menu and that's the control that TV220E gives over results. In this video, we're going to explore the TV220E cable library. I can get to the cable library through using the arrow keys and the enter key, or I can just tap on the cable library. The TV220E stores cables in a library. This is a library that is stored internal and you can see there's multiple cables in it. I can create a new cable. I can load a cable. we will go into that shortly. I can delete user created cables. I can also move a cable library from the instrument to USB or from USB to the instrument and then I can exit. Let me start with creating a, a, a new cable. So if I press the F1 key or if I touch on this menu, I'm asked now to enter a new cable information. Tap on the name. I'm just gonna call this test, T-E-S-T, -E and then I'm going to hit save. I'm given some quick options. This is to uh, capital characters. This is a space bar. Alternate changes focus between the name field and the keypad, and then obviously exit. If I wanted to exit and I didn't wanna save it, I can just press it. So I'm going to save the cable called test. I'm going to set a VP. I can tap on this. TV220 allows you to save a VP from 1 to 0.3. So I'm going to say 0.8. Let's say 0.87. Save. And then a loss factor of, let's say, 10. Save. We're just going to leave it at generic, but I've got uh, foam core, air core, and solid core options. Save and now I've saved that cable. Now, I can also delete any saved cable or any user created cable. So if I press the delete button, TV220E will ask me to delete or exit. If I press exit, nothing happens. If I press delete, it will delete that cable. I can also move the whole cable library up to the USB stick if I press this button or I can copy a cable library on the USB to the TV220E. Just a word of warning, when you move the cable library to the USB or from USB to the instrument, it will override your existing cable library. So I'm going to cancel this and then I can exit and back to the home screen. In this video, we're going to explore the TV220E settings menu. I can get to the settings menu by navigating using my keys and enter, or I can just tap the settings. On the device settings, I have five controls. I have backlight control, so I can increase or decrease my backlight. I then have my backlight timer. 
So this is an inactivity timer. You're telling the TV220E that after one minute, two minutes, five minutes, or you can turn it off of inactivity to dim the backlight. This is to save energy. The sleep control is determining how many minutes the unit will wait of inactivity before going to sleep. Then we have the power down timer. As I mentioned before, the TV220 actually goes to sleep. It doesn't power down. However, if you put the TV220E into storage, you can set a time that it will wait before it actually powers all the way down to save its battery. And this can be in the, in the form of weeks or days. Finally, we've got language control. Some, yeah, this is fairly self-explanatory. You can select the different languages you want. Now I'll go into measurement settings. Four controls in the measurement settings. You can tell the TV220E what unit you want to use for your on your TDR menu, either nanoseconds, meters, or feet. You can then tell what form the velocity propagation would be in. This is in decimal factor. You can have percentage. You can have meters per second, or you can have feet per second. Then we have the uh, TDR mode or trace mode. Right now, this is in live mode, so it's going to show you a live trace. This is intermittent mode. It shows you the live trace and any deviation that occurs while making measurements. I'll go into that when we're in the TDR menu. I can put it into save trace mode. So if I've loaded a trace, I can put the TDR into this mode and it's just going to display the static save trace. I can go into live plus saved so show the difference between the two traces. And then I can go into live minus uh, save, where I'm going to show the difference between the live trace and the save trace. I'm going to go back to live mode. Then I have distance. So this control allows you to set the measurement distance of the TV220. Right now it's in off. So it would be making measurement out to the maximum measurement distance. I can set it to uh, in feet, meters, or nanoseconds. So right now I can see it's in feet, and I can set it to any one of these different uh, measurement distances. This is very handy if you have a cable of a known length, and then you can, or uh, approximate length, and you can set the closest value of distance Thereby, you're not spending time looking down in, you know, 20,000 microseconds of or 20,000 nanoseconds of cable when the cable is only 100 nanoseconds long. If I change the setting to meters, you'll see that this changes to meters. Or if I change this to nanoseconds, you'll see it changes to nanoseconds. Next, we'll go into time and date. On the time and date settings, the TV220 has the day, the month, and the year, the time zone, and then are we in AM, PM, or 24 hour time? And the uh, hour and minutes. Next, we'll go into the information. So here's where we're displaying information about the, the machine. Uh, we've got the model number, the serial number. We're also displaying all of the software version numbers for uh, the application, the operating system, the measurement controller, FPGA and battery configuration. You'll also notice that we display the Wi-Fi SSID and the password. Again, these features will be enabled later and the calibration date. If there is a valid software update file on the USB, the USB is plugged in, the TV220E will uh, enable the update software button. If I press this button, I can uh, update the software. This is how you would update a TV220E in the field. And finally, I'm going to exit this and back to the home menu. In this video, we're going to explore the TDR capabilities of the TV220E. So I can get to TDR either using the arrow keys and the enter, or I can just tap. So now you'll see the TV220E displaying the TDR trace. You'll notice that there's two windows. There's the overview window and the detail window. The overview window is showing you the entire measurement distance of the TV220E. The detail window is showing you a either zoom window or again, the entire distance. I can control that using my fingers. If I go into the overview window and I activate it, as designated by this orange border. I can then use my fingers 
to pinch in and zoom along the cable trace. And you can see as I'm moving this zoomed window in, my display window is following this white region. So this is really handy for scanning down a cable and looking at events. I'll go into that a little bit later. So I can double tap and then bring my windows to be matching. So now my detail window is showing my entire overview window. I can go into my um, detail window. While I'm in the detail window, all of my TDR settings or my TDR parameters are available to me. I have control over the gain. I have control over the pulse width. I have control over smoothing and I can control my VP. So let's start with gain. I can tap that or I can press the manual button and I can cycle through if I want to use my keypads. So I'm going to tap that. So gain. I can use my arrow keys to increase the gain. By increasing the gain, I'm basically turning up the volume of the instrument and I'm able to see um, make events appear larger on my trace. I can use my arrow keys to bring it down. Typically what you'd want to use is a gain large enough to show events but not to saturate the machine, meaning not to have events off the scale. I can also tap that a second time and bring up my quick selections. So I can at any time just press the auto key and it will return the TV220E gain to the optimal gain for the distance being displayed or I can use the up and down keys here. I can then go into my pulse width and again now I'm showing you the quick picks. I have 1, 5, 25 and these are shaped pulses and I have 125 and 250, 250 and 500 nanoseconds. These are digital pulses, basically square pulses. I can just tap any pulse I want and quickly navigate to whatever pulse. On my smoothing settings, I can change my smoothing from 1 through 6. This correlates to a doubling of the averaging. So 1, 2, 4 averages, 8 averages, 16 averages, and 32 averages. And when I say averages, meaning traces, I'm averaging two traces, four traces, 16, 32, or 64. This helps when there's noise on the line and I want to reduce that noise level and have a smoother trace. Finally, I've got VP. Again, I can use my arrow keys to adjust VP up and down. I can use my on-screen arrow keys or I can just enter in a, a velocity propagation. Let's say I wanted 0.9. So I'd enter 0, 0.9, 0, 0. That's an acceptable range. The TV220E is saying that's okay, and I can press enter. If I were to press a uh, illegal value, say 0 0.2, 0, 0.2, 0, 0, the TV220E is not going to allow me to enter that in. So I'll back that up and put in 850 now. 850, valid, and enter. So a very quick way of getting um, a VP into the TDR. Now you notice your enter is in decimal format, but I currently have it in feet per microsecond. It's much easier for the user to enter it into decimal format, so that's the way we um, enter all of our VPs. So I'm going to exit out of that. Um, now I'm going to show you the cable library. So from the cable library, I can come in and select a new cable. Let's say I'm going to select Belden RG-6U. I can then load that cable and now the TV220E has accepted those values. So it, it tells you the name up here in the status bar and then it's accepting a loss value and a VP for that cable. So I'm going to exit that. If I come into the VP and I change that value, it will, the TV220E will designate that you've gone to a custom cable and no longer using the cable from the library. Now, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to put the VP back into decimal format just so it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, back to the cable library. So I can load a cable. I can also move the cable library from the TV220E to the USB drive or vice versa from the USB drive to the TV220E. I've covered that in an earlier video, or I can exit. Now let's go to the marker control. 
pressing F4. In this menu, I can drop a marker, I can dimension a marker, add notes, and delete markers. So if I have my cursor highlighted, I can move my cursor to wherever I want. Let's put it on that event. And I'm going to add a marker. So the TV220E has added marker number three. Now I'm going to add a second marker. Let's put on that small event there. And it's added marker four. Now I want a dimension between, let's say, two markers. So I press the marker first marker until I want to dimension that. Second marker, dimension that. And now it is dimensioning between the cursor, because I've had that, I'm telling it's dimension between the cursor, the first marker, and the second marker. I can turn off dimensioning to the cursor. I can also turn off dimensioning between the markers. I can add a note to a marker, and I can delete a marker. For example, I'm on marker number four, as it's highlighted, and I'm going to delete it. Yes. I can go to marker number three. I can then delete it. Yes. So this way I can drop markers and those markers will be saved when I save the result. So exiting that. Um, last thing I have is the save menu. So let's go ahead and press that. So here I have the option to save a result or to load a result. Again, loading a result allows me to compare it against a live trace later on. So let's go ahead and save this result. And I'm going to pick a new name for it. Let's just say test. And again, I've explained the keypad, but uh, this is for caps, space, alternate between the two keypad and the text, and exit. So I'm going to save it. I could add notes. I have a size selection. I can save a minimum trace, which saves basically what you're seeing on the display, but as data points, or a max trace. A max trace will save data from zero to the full extent of the TV220 measurement system. I can save a local or a USB. So if I want uh, from beginning to end, the maximum distance, I save the max trace. Or if I just want the trace that's being displayed, I save the min trace. Then I press this button. You'll see when I'm saving a max trace, it takes a couple seconds to gather all the data. but it is saving many, many thousands of data points. Okay, let me do that again. And let's save a min trace. So test one, save, just to show you the time difference. So now I'm gonna save a minimum trace and I'm gonna save it locally. Done. So there's test one, local, and there's test the max trace, both local. I can then take one of those traces, I can load it. So let's load trace one, yes. Now that icon tells me that I've loaded the trace and that would let me compare the trace. So let me show you the trace modes. So um, that's live mode. This is intermittent mode. And then that's the save trace. So that is a static trace of what I saved earlier. I can then go and change the mode to live plus static. So now I'm showing a live trace and the static trace, and I'll disconnect the measurement. And you see the blue line is the live and the green is the save trace. Okay. I'm gonna put it back into live mode. Okay, now we're back in live mode. So next I'll go into the auto mode and event detection. So I can press the manual button, press manual to auto, and now I'm in auto mode. Now what's happening in auto mode is the TV220E is making decisions about the gain, smoothing, pulse width, and velocity propagation. The user is allowed to override gain and pulse width if necessary. So let's uh, take the gain down a bit in our display window. Um, now, uh, we've already talked about the cable library, we've talked about the marker, and we've talked about saving, but now let's go into the events. Okay, now that I'm in event mode, you can see that I have the ability to turn off events. I can turn on events. So I'll turn on events. 
And the TV220E will, on its own, look for events on the cable and mark them. When I'm in the on mode, this is very similar to the TV220, not TV220E, but TV220 event on mode. I can pick event return loss, or I can pick return loss. The difference between these is event to return loss is backing out the loss in the cable, and basically it's a way of normalizing events. Return loss is just that, just return loss. I can pick all, I can pick three, or I can pick one event. And you'll see the TV220 adjust. One event, three events, or all events. I can also control the threshold of events. The larger this number is in decibel, the smaller the event that the TV220 will find. So if I begin to navigate to smaller and smaller events, I'm sorry, if I begin to navigate, if I turn this threshold down, I'm looking for larger and larger events. And pretty soon you'll see events start to drop off right about there. So that event dropped off. Now the second one is dropping off. I can bring it all the way up. So I'm only looking at the biggest events and pretty soon you'll see them all drop off. So you can determine the size of the events you want by controlling the threshold in decibels. Let me put it back all the way to 60. You see, I'm just navigating this with my finger. Okay. So that is um, event in on mode. Now I'm going to show you auto mode. So auto mode is identical to the TV220 wizard mode. The difference in the TV220E is we have better dynamic range, farther distance. And the other thing is we put all of the control on your fingertips. You don't need to back out all the way up to the settings menu or the top of the menu to enter the wizard mode with the TV220E. You'll notice that I don't have access to the event type. I don't have access to the number or the threshold. The TV220E wizard is doing all that work, but I do have event, uh, I, sorry, I do control the distance. So I'm gonna leave it at uh, 1,280 nanoseconds and exit. And now you'll see the TV220E is finding all of the events in the overview window and then showing them again in the detail window. I can go to my event list and begin to see what events. So it's finding a rising event, a rising echo. It's finding that the event return loss is bouncing between 13 and five and the distance. So as I, as I navigate here, you'll see different events come up. So let's go to the, um, this is a falling event and it's at 287 nanoseconds and I just tapped it <laughs> and it's 16 dB. So this is in the event, uh, I'm sorry, in the marker and event table, you can see the different events and you can add markers if you want. Now I'd like to show you an example of what the wizard can do to finding fault, small faults. Now let me show you the power of the TV220E wizard mode. So I've placed the TV220E in auto, which is the equivalent of the wizard mode on the TV220, our predecessor. I'm on a 2000 foot cable. The cable is comprised of 1000 feet of cable, a 75 ohm barrel connector, which is the correct impedance and another 1000 foot cable. These cables are both on the same reel. They just have the connector in between them. If you were to look at this trace, you would see the end and the TV220E has found the end of the cable at 2000 feet or 2000 nanoseconds or 2400 nanoseconds. But it's also marking another event. Let me get the, move the cursor out of the way. It's marking the event at 1200 nanoseconds. You'd be hard pressed to see that there's an event there. What the TV220E is doing in the background is it's taking multiple uh, measurements at different gains and at different pulse widths. It's analyzing all of that data and finding events. Now you see it's found an event at 1200 nanoseconds. Now let's go raise the gain so we can see that clearly. So I'd have to be at a gain of 48 and 25 nanosecond pulse width 
to see that there's an event there. Even a well-trained person may mistake that. But there is an event there. It is a 75 ohm barrel connector, which is the correct connection for this cable. So the event detection, the auto and wizard mode, have the power to find small faults on your cable. That's some of the new power in the TV220E. Now I'm gonna to go to a more complex cable and show you the power of the event detection. Now I've connected the TV220E up to a very complex cable. This is not the type of cable you typically see in your cable plant, but it is a cable that I use in my laboratory. Um, this cable is comprised of multiple different sections and T's to create long stubs to give me lots of events. I'm seeing both events and I'm seeing echoes. Again, the TV220 is in the auto mode or we call it the wizard mode and it's finding different events. The TV220E has found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven events. The TV220E is capable of finding up to 10 events. This again is the power of the TV220E over all the other TDRs on the market today. I said the TV220E can diagnose your cable, your coaxial cable plant health faster and more accurately than any other product. And this is an example. <clears throat> I can then take my fingers and I can pinch in on the uh, overview window and I can begin to slide along on the detail trace and look at different events that the, the TV220E has found. So I can get into very, very fine detail. I can move my marker to where I want, but everything has been tagged by the TV220E. This is the power that comes with the new TV220E. Quite simply, again, the TV220E is the most powerful, most capable TDR available today in this class. And Tempo is confident that the TV220E can diagnose the health of your cabling plant and find issues faster than any other device on the market. Thank you.